Let's go ahead and talk about the final simple machine, and probably the most interesting out of all the simple machines, the screw. And the reason why the screw is so interesting is because it always winds up with a super high mechanical advantage and yet such a low efficiency. Let's start by talking about why it has such a high mechanical advantage. And the reason is, is because it's really actually two simple machines combined. So with that, let's go ahead and write out a definition for ourselves, and let's widen this a little bit so we have room to write. But a screw is a spiraling inclined plane. So let's write that out. Spiral inclined plane. combined with a wheel and axle. And so let's break that down, what we mean when we say wheel and axle, and what we say, or what we mean when we say incline plane. So if you look, you sort of twist a screwdriver with your fingers, well, that'd be the wheel. Whereas down here would be the axle, the force resistance fighting you. The screw itself is the axle, and this is just sort of a drive shaft connecting the two. What we mean by a, a spiraling inclined plane, as you can see, as it twists, it's sort of going almost like, think of these threads as like a hill, going up and down hill. So what do we mean by that? Well, if I were to drop in an actual spiraling staircase or a spiral, let's say, ramp, even though it's not really a ramp, if you look at it, you can see how it kind of spins around and how it slowly goes up, slowly goes up. That's kind of what our threads are doing here. And so a better example might be not a spiraling staircase, what a spiraling ramp, or like maybe something you see in a garage where it's kind of spinning up and up and up. It's sort of a spiraling inclined plane. And as you can see, as it sort of, if you were to take it, if you were to stretch it out and unravel it, you would get a regular heel, a regular inclined plane. So let's go ahead and sketch this sort of system out, just so we have it in our own notes. So let's go ahead and draw ourselves a little screwdriver. And the screwdriver kind of looks a little bit like a thumbtack, but that's okay because it's just sort of an example. Let's go ahead and give it a pointy end. That's, that's this part, as you can see. It's just shortened, so we can kind of fit it all on our, or in our notes or on our page. Um, and then let's go ahead and draw ourselves a screw. I'll pick a different color for that. And it sort of just points down. It looks a little bit like a nail, but it's really not that big a deal, because it's just sort of a quick sketch, a quick drawing. But let's go ahead and unravel the thread. So let's pretend like the threads aren't there because we unraveled it. So instead of them spinning around the screw in sort of a spiral, let's go ahead and draw ourselves a little triangle that's sort of an unraveled thread coming out. Sort of like here, you can see how they unraveled it. So as it's unraveled, you can kind of see more clearly how it becomes an inclined plane. It's just like we said, going in a spiral, kind of like a spiraling staircase. With that, let's go ahead and label the parts to this, because as you can see, we have a spiraling inclined plane, we have a wheel and an axle. Let's label each part. So for example, this right here, where I apply my effort force, let's write that out a little bit better. But where I apply my effort force, where I wrap my fingers around, that would be the wheel. And down here, where I'm getting that resistance when it's driving into wood, that would be the axle. So what am I talking about? Well, if you look back at this animation, you can see, well, that's where the effort resistance is. That's the axle. Now, as it spins, as we twist it, it's sort of going further and further down our hill or our spiral, or in the, what we call it is just an inclined plane. And so that's this part. Or if you look, that's, again, this part. But let's break down how the system works now that we've got a simple sort of crude drawing of it. What happens is, is we sort of take this screwdriver and we spin it around. So let's go ahead and label this sort of half circular arrow as a, or a representation of it rotating or spinning. And that's what we're drawing here. It's sort of, you can see it's sort of spinning around. And what happens as we spin this screwdriver is you can see the screw moves downward. So the screw then sort of moves down. Let's go ahead and write down with a D, not an S. But if you take a second to think about what that means, well, if you look, what's happening is we are sort of turning this rotational movement into a linear movement. So the further we twist this, the further straight down this goes. And so if you think about it, that's kind of how the system works. It takes this wheel and axle and sort of this spiraling inclined plane and sort of, well, let's go ahead and write this out for ourselves. It translates, let's see if we can widen this. It translates 
rotational movement. And let's eh, movement into linear movements. Let's go ahead and write that out into linear movements. And so now that we've defined how a screw works, or we've defined a screw and explained how the system works and sort of broken down its components and sort of explained them, now we get to talking about how mechanical advantage and the math behind a screw, how all that works. And we'll do that in the next few videos.